딱 매초 이렇게 클립 만들라. 햄버스 호텔? 어. 
안아야 샐러리 만들어 중간중간에 서봐 
그거 행사하는 거. 아. 다이어. 비디오야. 다나. 다음부터는 미리 찍는다고 말을 해주시면 좋겠다. 미나. 코딱지 파는 미나. Oh. Are you referring to? Yeah, the year of the Great Chicago Fire. Holy cow, pun intended. This fire was no small spark. It destroyed two thirds of the entire city. Burning roughly 17,000 homes and businesses, and it left around one. This building above us is the tallest building in the entire world to be designed by a female architect. How the heck do you reverse the flow of a river? Well, we dammed off sections of the river behind us. Then we dug a separate canal 15 feet deeper than the already 22 foot depth of the river itself. And then turn this photo off, right? Our boat, though, is going to keep on moving because we've got some traffic along the river coming up soon. So I'm going to keep on talking. But again, make sure we're taking full towers are the most photographed buildings in the entire city today. Their official name is Marina City. Designed in the early 1960s by Bertrand Goldberg and Associates, these are the first two residential towers built on the north part of the river. Bertrand Goldberg believed no right angles exist in nature when you look at this building, think two words, Art Deco. You can tell it's Art Deco by its limestone exterior, vertical emphasis, and use of carvings on the outside. Those are three big ticket characteristics of a super influential style here in the 30s. Um, you'll find Art Deco widely represented across your city, both inside and outside the buildings. Now the next two buildings above us to your right all belong to a larger group called the Gateway Center Complex. And they're all based around this idea that Chicago itself is the gateway to the Midwest because of the very train lines that run right beneath them, right? We're a train capital of the United States. Alleged, chances are also if you're playing a tourist, that might be on your list of things to do. There's people at Riverwalk that's above us. This building plays a very cool role in our like, big vision we have for the river. As a city, we're dedicated to completely to making a river accessible to the public from both sides. Which means, if you build anything new, you have to incorporate that public access. Be it a river walk, a restaurant, a dog park, whatever it might be. The hopes are to extend that public access on both sides. Republican running candidate for 16th President of the United States. That was done right here where the wigwam now used to be. Uh, Lincoln was not present during his nomination. Presidents typically weren't back then. So Lincoln was never actually there, but still pretty cool. Alrighty. <laughs> you guys are troopers for hanging out in the upper deck with me. I appreciate y'all. Um, I'd say sit over here, but this bench is completely soaked, so I'm sorry. Take a peek above us, though. We have this beautiful curved green glass building. It's called 333 West Wacker, designed in 1983 by Cohn, Peterson, and Fox. A couple things about this building. Uh, it's a great example of contextualism. Not only reflects the color of the river, but also its natural bend here, too. My other favorite fun fact about this building is that it makes a cameo in my favorite Chicago film. Have you ever seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Who has it? Come on. Uh, there's a scene in that movie where Ferris's dad is working up in his office and his son is right below him, that parade twisting and shouting. Those office scenes supposedly took place in this green glass building. However, if you look really closely in the movie, the actual parade happens about six blocks south of this building. So, no wonder why I didn't see his son. Uh, but it's a great movie. <laughs> it's up there. It's one, one of my outside favorites. Um, other favorites of your tour guides include The Fugitive with Harrison Ford, Blues Brothers, of course, While You're Sleeping, Transformers, Batman. Oh my god, the list goes on. 
Now your tour guide is chatting about movies because she likes to, but also it's a really good segue into the newest addition here to the Riverwalk as well. You guys notice this glass box hovering above those two people in the Riverwalk? That can just connect by these underpasses too. So theoretically, you can walk along this down the lake without crossing any busy streets. These pieces of silver though, that kind of arc over each of the underpasses, the technical term for those are called eyelashes. I think that's so funny. I think it's so cool. Anywho, um, all right, let's talk about uh, this building coming up on your right, tall reflective glass building with a soul cycle at the bottom. This is called 111 West Wacker, completed in 2013, designed by Tang and Associates. The building off to your right is home to ultra luxury apartments, which means really expensive places to live. Uh, a studio in this building is $4,000 a month to rent. Ultra luxury is actual brand of those apartments. That does exist. All right. To your right is a personal favorite of your tour guides. It's called 77 West Wacker, uh, designed in 1992 by Ricardo Bofill, Stefano, and Partners. You might notice at the top here, um, not quite like, blinded by all the rain, but you'll notice a triangle-shaped structure at the very top. That's a pediment. It looks like it comes right from the parking lot, right? It's a good example of the You see that great old top building above us? That's a carbon carbide building. Today it's home to the Pendulum Hotel. Uh, the top is real gold. It's 24 purple accents. It might remind you of a champagne bottle in terms of its color scheme, shape, and design. Edison.
하나, 둘. 하나, 둘. 박근우 